So hi everyone. Today we have Prerna with us, who has, is a cat, one of the cat toppers. She scored 99.6 plus percentile in cat in 2020, as well as she's now got calls and converts from some of the top IMs like I'm Lucknow, I'm Cozy Code, and she's awaiting some results of the other IMs as well. So congratulations, Prerna, and welcome to the today's interaction session. Thanks, Sanjay. Yeah. So um. So today on behalf of an academy, I'll be um, interacting with her and trying to understand well, how she went about her preparations to achieving such a stellar result. And I'm hopeful that whatever we she talks about today will be very useful for several aspirants going forward. So let's start with the basic thing. So you when you got 99.6 plus percentile in CAT, what was the first reaction when you got calls and you started getting such a good percentile? Was it expected or was it like over the? Uh, I got to know my cat score a bit early like after the the release the response sheet so i was expecting something around 99.5 plus but i was happy with my dad for 64 like it was easier to get the calls from top ians okay so if you if you had to attribute was it your first attempt at cat or have you attempted cat before oh well, this was my second attempt the first attempt was one when i was in my fourth year okay So, what exactly did you do different this year that resulted in a higher percent? Because a lot of people had to struggle, you know, to increase their percentile from one attempt to the next attempt. So, what majorly worked for you in your project? So, in my first time, my percentile was ninety nine to six point three, and I increased it to that ninety six point three. Yeah. So, the main thing I'll say is giving a lot of mocks. So, I gave around fifty to sixty mocks in this season, and I analyzed every bit of those, which I didn't do in my first attempt. Was quite lazy one, so this was the important thing I did. And another thing is that kept, kept, I kept on going with the preparation. I was not stopping at one point, and there was no lag in between. That was the main thing: the mocks and getting your basics clear, understanding your weak areas. So, how many mocks will you take in a week? Two mocks a week? Yeah, around two mocks a week. And if I had a little less work on my office side, then sometimes I used to attend three mocks a week. Okay, great. And a lot of aspirants are confused. You know, when is the ideal time to start taking a mocks and so on? So, when would you recommend as the ideal time to start? This is one thing I tell everyone. The first thing in your preparation should be to take a mock. So, when you take a mock in a test environment, you get to understand what are your weak areas, and that way you can start your preparation. Is there's no ideal time to take a mock? The first thing is should be to take a mock. Because if you say that I'll start taking mocks around September, August, or something like that, you won't be able to complete fifty to sixty mocks. It's impossible. So it's right. the, the, the earlier you start, the better it is. Okay. So, um, in CAT, which do you think is the most difficult section, especially personally for you as well as overall? Which do you think is the most difficult section, and how do you tackle that? So, I being an engineer, my most difficult section was VARC <laughs> as usual. So I won't say I was too bad. Like in first attempt, I also got ninety percent time, but yeah, it wasn't great enough. So the first thing for DRC is as much as reading you can do. The thing is that so I used to take out around one hour of reading, mainly articles, because that would help me in my GDPI preparation as well. And then one hour has to keep for solving sectionals or RCs, these type of things. So this is one area of which I have. Do you think got. reading habits is very essential to improving one's VRC sections first? Definitely, even I have seen many engineers who had great reading habits, and they had no problem with VRC, the RC. They could score ninety nine percent at like on any test. So that reading habit is very important. But you can improve in like five six months. You can easily. That's what I can say. What about the DL section? Everybody talks about the DL section. The last four five years have become very difficult with a lot of challenging, unpredictable sets. So how did you tackle that section? So DILA was my strongest area, I'll say. But I felt that was the one of the most dicey sections of CAT because see, if you can't do a set, there's four questions in one set, you lose twelve marks over there. Right. That can just change the ball game totally. So even this year, many of many people didn't get a call because they didn't cross a DILA cutoff. Right. So I think the most important area is understanding which sets to pick up in a CAT question paper because there's always two or three sets which you can. So understand that comes when you take a lot of mocks. That it comes with practice, understanding which set to pick up, which is easier for you. So you're saying that through your mocks, you've got to identify which are the areas which you're scoring, and you've got to look at attempting more sets from those areas. Is that what you're recommending? Yeah. 
uh, like see cat creation i feel is 90% box analyzing the mocks giving the mocks if you do that thoroughly dedicatedly you are done okay so moving on from cat to the second phase right so you uh, you converted i am lucknow so congratulations for that you converted i am kohli course congratulations for that and you expect to con to convert xri as well so keeping these in mind um what do you think is the biggest hurdle that people face in the gdpi period because a lot of people don't have clarity on you know that part yeah the first thing is that you need to be aware of your surroundings the thing is that not you don't need to know everything that's not expected but you need to know about yourself and the best thing i think for in an interview even i heard from my seniors was the easiest thing is to be yourself and that's how it's very easy to ace an interview but other than there are some practice you need to practice some mock interviews and uh, get to know about the surroundings i said like read articles about the gdpi and also that's fine so one more thing so earlier um, every gdpi interview would happen via uh, having to go to a particular hotel and something and taking an interview as in it was an offline procedure so did you have to attempt interview this time for iim which we had an online procedure involved Yeah, yeah, all of all of my IMs and XRI and SMS was online. Online. Just, so, how diff different do you think it is to give an online interview, and what extra things do you have to somebody to keep in mind when cracking an online? Because there will be no GD process. GD process importance goes down. It's more of the interview part, and in an online interview, it's will be somewhat different from an offline where you can actually the person can just see you and observe you more. So, what differences do you think is coming since this has happened? So basically, the trend according to this year was the online interviews a bit shorter than what it was in offline phases. So the thing is that you have to create an impression within the five, first five minutes. Like they must be interested in you. Right. So that was one thing you had to keep in mind. If they are not interested you in, in, in you, then they'll shorten the interview to about ten minutes, and you won't be getting the desired marks. So, so what that's that you must have a good strategy to keep yourself, keep your profile more interesting. So, for example, what would you try to do? I and mean, then you can just share one or two pointers. This is what I would try to do to keep the um, panelists engaged. So the one thing is that you should have one talking point in your profile, something which you are interested in. Other than you are maybe you are an engineer, you are working with a great organization. So these are the people they have already, but there must be something you should talk about which they may be interested in. So in my case, it was a very normal thing. I told them I love cooking and I want to open a restaurant when I am forty five years of age, or forty or forty five, but when I have enough money. And each and every panelist in all of the interviews, they were very keen on understanding, and then they went on to ask a different questions about that. So where do you think in Kolkata? is a good place to open a restaurant why 45 years so you must have a hook so understand that hook that must be something you know you have to do a lot of what? research on the restaurant industry before you went into the interviews definitely definitely like you need to understand like what what kind of restaurant you want to open so you need to understand yourself even in my i am lucknow he was asking me why, where do you want to open a restaurant why not park street or short ghost road these are important places in kolkata why not salt lake so he was asking me these questions and i had to ask him that so it was nice okay so great so um you are a working professional right so how difficult was it to balance your preparations with your office work and so on? that that is something a lot of aspirants keep complaining every year in the working crowd so how difficult was that especially in the work from home model that is there it was difficult so according to me is that in work from home model the main problem is that you don't have fixed hours so work can come any at any point of time so uh, i joined the, my organization in september and after that even i could see my cat score like my mock scores were dropping a bit but i utilized my weekends like when you're working you have to sacrifice your weekends <laughs> no partying and all and that is one thing but the yeah, covid was there so we we had no choice of going out and that's why the main thing is time management you need to understand time management you can give a mock in two days also like it's fine but you have to analyze it and get acquainted with the patients that's all So you're saying it is possible for work ex people to balance their preparations with um, their work and so on, right? Definitely, I I think around just only thirty percent in the IMs are freshers. The rest seventy percent are all work ex people. Correct. It's quite Now, um, so you you converted on multiple calls in the top B schools, right? So what is what do you think is the evaluation parameter parameter that B schools tend to focus on 
or in aspirants, which is where a lot of aspirants tend to crash out of the process. Uh, I think they want stability. That's one thing they want. Like, you must have a stable academic record. One thing is that I've seen people, they had 99.9 plus, they get great interviews, but maybe they had some one or two job years. So some interviews, they, they tend to not to take them. This is one area. The second is that be yourself. Like, that's, like you don't have to prove some, something too much. Just be yourself. They'll be happy to, like, to interview you. And and most importantly, you can you can never guess. Even I can't guess what they are seeing in me, like during an interview. If you think that okay, I gave this interview, this was a great interview, but you don't know what they are judging. Even my XLRI interview, I was sure that I'm not going to convert it. It was like so brutal. But okay, I got a like very near shortlist. Okay, so um, if you had to give any um, you know, approximate weekly routine that you would recommend to CAD aspirants are preparing for let's say CAD this year, which is in six months time. What would it be? How many hours should they devote to their CAD preparations approximately? So as for working professional side, they say take two mocks in the weekends, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. So right. normally these are proctored mocks. Okay, so you won't get the result, results like after two, three days. And try to get around two or three hours, which is quite possible regarding what work you do. For analyzing the most, give your like give at least four to five hours just to analyze the most, so that when the same questions come again, you must be able to answer that. That's the best thing. So in the week weekends, I think you should give at least six to seven hours. And in the you need to give any do anything else to prepare for the infections, any to revise and so on. Uh, only for VRC, I think reading articles because, I, as I mentioned, to help you for your GDP preparation as well and improve your reading skills. And other than that, no, I don't think like you can go over the formulas. I keep a note, keep a notebook just to get to the important points of DILR or especially quants. This will help. Okay. So, any uh, tips for quants? So that's one section we've not yet discussed. Any tips for quants? Yeah, once I feel number one is for, like don't neglect arithmetic. Even I've seen uh, engineers do that. That okay, I love geometry or algebra, but don't neglect arithmetic. That is one area and improve your mental calculation. There are lots of games you find on internet which you can play, which helps increasing your mental calculation calculation skills. Do you think and other solving said, helps? Yeah, definitely. I like I was an avid puzzle solver from my childhood, and when I started with my DILR profession, I said I saw that okay, I'm a bit better in this area. It helps a lot. So now that you have a lot of converts on your hands, so which uh, B school are you finally aiming at joining? I'm aiming at joining I'm Lucknow. I'm Lucknow. Great. Um, I hope I'm sure rather that this interaction session will help a lot of aspirants. Thanks, Prerna, for taking out some time from your schedule. And I wish you all the very best for your B-School endeavors and for your post-B-School career as well. So on that note, um, on behalf of the entire crew, thanks to Prerna for sharing some great insights with all of us.